Tim, um, about this situation where children have unfortunately gone missing from asylum hotels in the UK, what's, what's the government doing about this? Obviously, it's very concerning. <clears throat> okay, let's be clear to put this in, uh, uh, in, in context. Uh, when people come to the UK uh, seeking asylum, if they've come through boats or other irregular uh, means, uh, they are not put in prison. Uh, they are put up in, in hotels and other uh, accommodation. They are free, in most cases, to come and go as they please, and that particularly involves children. So we cannot stop those children, and I think it's something like 87% of those who have gone missing are 16- and 17-year-old boys. So there's only a record of one teenage girl who has uh, gone missing from these hotels. There are very, very few uh, documented uh, cases of them actually being taken by traffickers. So it's not a case of traffickers waiting outside the hotels to snatch them. There was one case at a hotel in Sussex, and that uh, child was recovered very quickly by uh, the police. So let's put this into context. I'm afraid those children, and they are children, but they are older teenagers, uh, have chosen to leave the hotels, in many cases have gone to family, friends and contacts. But in some cases, uh, may well be working with uh, traffickers and in criminal um, Do you gangs. know where they are? Because now, surely stands, you can't say that if stands, you don't know where they are. As it stands, as it stands at the moment, uh, as we heard from the Home Secretary in front of the Home Affairs Select Committee on Wednesday, there are zero children in hotel accommodation for asylum seekers in the UK. They have now all been placed in foster care at great expense, specialist foster care, uh, where they can be looked after. Yes. But again, they are free to abscond if they choose to. That's the but nature they're still children of how we process in the eyes the of the claims. law. And do they you are... know where they are? It, like, what's uh, been done to find them? Where... You don't know where they are. OK. Um, the next question I want to ask is... Are. Let me finish. Don't, before you go on, don't leave it open-ended uh, like that. But we've answered the question. In OK, all the continue. In all of the hotels where these people have been working, there are social workers, there are specialists, mm -hmm. uh, please, there are child psychologists looking after those children in the very best way um, they can, working now with foster carers where they have been um, placed. They have come here irregularly, and when we have hundreds of people, whether Albanians or others, including some uh, teenagers, arriving uh, overnight all of a sudden, then it put places huge strain on our facilities. So what, what else can we, can we actually do with them? Would you like us to lock them up? Would you like Albanians to be put in secure accommodation whilst their asylum applications are No, but are, I would expect processed. that children are given a special care, you know, um, the fact that whether they've come Which to the UK are. irregularly or not, they are children. It doesn't matter whether they're male Which or they female or under the age of 18. Described. Well, they've been okay. given special care, they've, as I've just described. They've, they've gone missing. But I want to ask you the main question that I want to know about, that I'm interested in, and something that really bothers me, and I want to ask you both. There is a very toxic rhetoric around this debate um, the Prime Minister and politicians in the UK have, have exchanged a lot of insults and back and forth, etc. There have been some quite disappointing words coming out of Downing Street as well, um, calling Albanians criminals, statements to find the Albanians and send them back to Tirana. Now, I want to just say, I called the British Passport Office about three or four months ago, well, actually just before Christmas, to inquire about my daughter's British passport. And the man on the end of the phone working in a government department told me, oh, another Albanian after a British passport. I've had, I know friends in the UK with Albanian children who are being bullied and ostracised in the playground because of this rhetoric which is coming out, which has come, essentially, from politics. Do you not think that this singling out of Albanians in a way, and some of the language that has been used by politicians is really detracting from the, the situation, which you have explained very well, Tim. You know you've said there's a lot more to it. We do want to look at cases and evaluate properly, etc. But this is getting lost in what appears to be this war of words, which has very real and serious consequences for Albanians in the UK. Um, you have just come up with phrases like war of words. You've just described mm -hmm. some phrases to Downing Street which absolutely have not come out of, of, of Downing Street. There okay. may be some politicians who have made comments which have gone further than they should have done. And Albanians are not being discriminated against. The situation is that three years ago, 
50 people coming across the channel were Albanian. The following year, I think the figure was 300. Last year, there was 13,000, 28% of all people coming across small boats. So there was a clear problem with Albanians seeking to come to the mm -hmm. United Kingdom. And yet circumstances in Albania had not changed. There's no civil war going on in Albania. Things have not materially changed in those two years. So what has happened? And that's why the Albanian situation got specific uh, attention because nothing had changed to merit so many Albanians then seeking asylum. And when you look at Germany, you look at Holland, you look at Sweden, where they do not entertain asylum applications as they don't from other European countries as well. Why is it that the UK appeared to be hosting or being asked to host so many Albanians who were not fleeing from danger and persecution in the way that many, many other asylum seekers come into the country. And we have taken in this country 160,000 people fleeing from Hong Kong, 180,000 people fleeing from uh, Ukraine, 23,000 people from Afghanistan, more than any other uh, European country. These people are in serious peril. Should they put, be put on the same basis as people come from Albania, which is a safe country, notwithstanding some of the internal problems that you've got. But we are not the refuge for the world. We have a very generous asylum policy and looking after refugees from many parts of the world and have done for many, many years. And I'm afraid there are people from Albania who were gaming the system clearly with people smugglers. And that was a problem that jointly working with the Albanian authorities, the British government wants to resolve and we are resolving and the numbers have come down considerably and we hope it will stay that way. But do you, I mean, that didn't really answer my question, which was, are you not concerned that this is driving a very toxic rhetoric? I don't want to see any toxic rhetoric. There was no toxic rhetoric when Eddie Rama came and met the Prime Minister in uh, London recently. They had a, a very warm and constructive um, visit. Albanians are not being singled out, but I've just given you the facts. Last but year, Robert Jenrick said, the "Find the Albanians and send them back Albanians. to Tirana." This is if not. If there are Albanians coming to the UK, like any other people, who do not have a legitimate case to claim asylum, as very many of them don't, then they will be returned where they can be to the countries from which they came. We have a very constructive returns agreement with the Albanian government. We want that to continue working. But I'm also will pose the question to you, is mm -hmm. it in the interest of Albania to be losing so many tens of thousands of skilled and unskilled people mm -hmm. from your economy, including skilled people from the your health service who are being poached by uh, by Germany? Of course, it's a you huge You need problem. to be doing much mm -hmm. more to make Albania a more attractive place of course, for it's Albanians a, it's to stay. It's a huge and problem, we, and it's something... That as well. If you've read the report, in the report, we have urged the British government, and we spoke to the British Embassy, are we doing more to advertise where there are vacancies in the United Kingdom to which Albanians are entitled to apply in just the same way as any other uh, citizens, where we have skills shortages, and we welcome them. We have many Albanians working legitimately, legally, in the construction industry mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom, and we need them. But what we don't need is people who are gaming the system. And there are a number of Albanians uh, who are being uh, trafficked, who are, uh, need to be treated as victims, absolutely. We need to jointly clamp down on the people who are uh, profiting from this uh, smuggling, from those uh, criminal uh, gangs and other people who are coming here with no credible reason to mm -hmm. claim asylum because they're economic um, migrants. The UK cannot be the refuge for anybody who has a problem in Albania.